Over the last few months, we've covered the case of a young girl known only as ST in the courtroom who was fighting to have her life-saving treatment continued after NHS doctors tried to push her into end-of-life care. Tragically, a few weeks ago, ST died after her long battle with a rare mitochondrial disorder. But the reporting restrictions on her and her family's names remained in place. In a victory for her family, the court has finally ruled that their daughter, Sudiksha Thirumalesh, can now be named. But questions and concerns still remain after the court decided to impose continued reporting restrictions on the NHS trust and doctor that treated Sudiksha. Generally speaking, reporting restrictions may apply where a person is under the age of 18 or concerns over the fear and distress of a witness are high. Concerningly, the court is protecting not just the doctor but an entire trust that was making life or death decisions behind closed doors. We saw this during the Lucy Letby trial, where much of it was conducted in secrecy, and key witness doctors were provided with anonymity orders, allowing them to give evidence behind a screen. The growing number of privacy witnesses who also happen to be doctors in court is a cause for concern. Reporting restrictions were introduced in order to protect individuals, not allow professionals and professions to escape scrutiny. Well, I'm very grateful to be joined now by Sudiksha's brother, Varshan Thirumalesh. Varshan, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Um, this must be such a difficult time for you and for your, your family after your sister fought so bravely and was so determined to try and have treatment right until the end. Yes, she was fighting for almost a year and two months and she really wanted to get the transparency lifted so that her story could be heard and she could seek nucleoside treatment abroad, but that was denied to her by the hospital that was treating her. Because there is nucleoside treatment uh, that was possibly available in Canada, yeah. uh, and that your sister wanted to at least have an attempt to, to get that, but the NHS just said no. They said no, but they were saying that they wouldn't be in the way of stopping it, but they did everything to prevent it by getting the courts, and they were working hand in glove at the end of the day to prevent this from happening. And, and your sister was 19, so she yeah. was over the age uh, of um, majority. She was able, in all normal circumstances, uh, to take decisions for herself. What, what basis was there for saying that she shouldn't be able to determine her own treatment? Well, they were saying from the very beginning that she has no capacity to make decisions for a treatment, and she was put into palliative care because that was the simplest option for them at the end of the day, which is just to put into palliative care rather than focusing on getting treatment for this complex illness, which they were not doing. But the male group ran a long interview with your sister yeah. um, just a few weeks ago where she was able to answer all the questions. She was able to put her case with considerable thoughtfulness. Did the courts take no notice of that? The courts didn't. At the end of the day, my sister was penalised by the courts and the justice system, and they were working hand in glove to prevent everything from sort of... Uh, they denied the access for her treatment abroad. And the denial of your ability to say who you were, to speak openly, was one of the real problems, wasn't it? Because you couldn't get your case heard in the court of public opinion, nor could you raise funds for your sister so that she could um, afford to have the treatment abroad. Yeah, we weren't asking for a penny from the NHS. At the end of the day, we just wanted her to be set free from the hospital because she felt like she was imprisoned in the hospital by a group of tyrants. I mean, don't get me wrong, at the end of the day, many doctors were working very hard and the registrars and the nurses, but few, few people from the senior management ruined it for us. So when you went into the hospital to visit your sister, who was it who was causing the blocking? And we can't mention names, but what, what sort of level were they? What type of person? They were the clinical lead of that particular ward and the whole system was based around them and they denied her the access. And you received some support from groups to help you, because obviously yeah. going to court is an expensive business. You have a raid against you, yeah. the lawyers paid for by the state, the hospital paying for it, the court funded by the state. Against that, you, you really are David against Goliath. Who, who was supporting and helping you through this process? We were supported by Christian Concern and Indy from Daily Mail, who, and by people who were signing the petition for Sadiqsha so that she could receive the treatment. And 
th this was where you really needed to get published in. The Daily Mail did a very good job in yeah. highlighting Sadiqsha's case, but without knowing her name, it was really difficult to get the follow-on publicity that you really needed. Yes, we just wanted her name to be publicised so that she could get some sort of help from the nook and corner of the world, but that was denied to her and she was devastated when she heard that she was not going to get that sort of treatment. And do you think the continuing secrecy in relation to the hospital and the people concerned is an attempt to cover up a mistake? Yes, because they did a open cut surgery in my sister when she was hospitalised for COVID, so that was a huge setback for her and that was to cover up their mistakes. So you think the surgery they carried out was a mistake and therefore to cover that up, yeah. they went to the court to say that she had no capacity to make further decisions about her own treatment? Yes, and they were pushing her into palliative care, saying that there are no other options for her. And palliative care is treating pain and is essentially assuming that there is no hope, that, that life is not going to continue? Yes but they were even not given her the basic medications like treating infections with antibiotics and she wasn't given the l blood pressure medication to keep her blood pressure stable, so that was very difficult for us. So they had made a decision really to put a sense of death on your sister. This is absolutely appalling. Yes, we were shocked as well. They washed, our, they washed their hands off since day one. And your sister was 19, so she was able and she could communicate, she could make these decisions. She didn't want to accept that there was no hope. She wanted to fight and the hospital insisted that she could not fight. Yeah, she wanted to fight till the very end. And as the family, you had no power to move her to another hospital or take her abroad because the hospital had gone to court. Yes, to we were doing everything we can to at least to another hospital, if possible, so that a fresh pair of eyes and hands can treat her. But there was a lot of unconscious bias on how she's going to recover, and they just imposed these draconian measures on her. Uh, and so you weren't able even to get a second opinion from another hospital within the NHS that, that might have been willing to um, give her another chance, another opportunity? No, we weren't. We were denied that opportunity and even though we were given second opinions, but they were all looking at my sister remotely and trying to treat her, which I think was very wrong because it's a profession where at the end of the day you need the hands-on care and my sister was missing that. Well, and the other thing that is really worrying is that this privacy, which was meant to protect your sister as the patient, has been used to protect people who are covering up their mistakes and that must clearly be wrong. Yes. That's why justice needs to be brought to my sister. Even after her death, we are still fighting for her capacity judgment to be overturned. So we're going for an appeal and we're doing everything that we can possibly do so, to bring justice to my sister. Well, may your sister's soul and the souls of all the faith departed by the mercy of God rest in peace. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you, Varshan.